these four things. Number one, how many of y'all have a phone? Number two, how many have Wi-Fi at the house? Number three, do you have a car? Number four, once in a while, do you like to eat food? People chuckle, yeah. right? These four things, if you're just an employee, can these four things, no side hustle again, these four things, are these tax deductible? And guess what? They're not. But if you start a side hustle, you start selling cupcakes on the side, you start tutoring on the side, you start te teaching Spanish on the side, you start personal training on the side, you start a car repair service, landscaping business, selling insurance, real estate on the side, side hustle, e-commerce on the side, whatever it is, start a side hustle because these four things I just talked to you about, if these four things are expenses or activities done in the, con in the conduct of growing a trade or business, that's IRS talk, mm. then these things then potentially can become tax deductible. That's why one of my, my favorite videos on my YouTube channel is why I pay 25 bucks a month net, net, net deductions and expenses for my Rolls Royce because I buy things in the pursuit of growing a trade or business. Now, one of my favorite meals is on Sundays with my mom. After she comes to church, she comes to, we come to a place for brunch. Dad is there. Kids are there. Wife is there. We order our food. But to the extent of my mom, she can't help it. She's got, she's got an itch. Because it's changed your life. She goes, Machu, how's the business? <laughs> how's how's Swassel? How's Hansberry? How's Kendrick? Right? She might start asking my business and how we're growing our business and how she can help grow the business. M Mom, thank you for turning this meal into a tax deductible meal. Because you're talking about business. Because now we're talking about business. So these are things that you have to master as a citizen, how to minimize what one pays in tax, but maximize what you earn. Because what you, the more you keep, you are a better steward of the tax dollars, not the government. Obfuscation. Now, people say, flip it. Well, Matt, what about the, uh, for you entrepreneurs, the PPP loan? No, you guys uh, applied for the PPP loan. Uh, by the way, I never did. Yeah. But business owners applied for the PPP loan during, the, during COVID, and they never had to pay that money back. And guess who subsidized that? American taxpayer. Fair argument. But nonetheless, you got to find a way to understand how tax is going to work in your favor. And by the way, guess why America... The tax code incentivizes tax deductions for those growing a trade or business. Guess what America wants you to become? If, and for example, let compensation dictate what you should be doing. So in other words, if I make a dollar as an employee, first thing it takes off of my taxes. Yeah. If I work, make that same dollar as an entrepreneur, the last thing that, that gets taxed is that dollar because of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So where should you be making your money? As, as an employee or as an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur, right. of course. You can read that one time. The first thing that's taken out of your paycheck as an employee is taxes. Yeah. The last thing that's take, taken out of your paycheck as an entrepreneur is no. taxes. Yeah, the taxes. So what is the government incentivizing us to do? Become a entrepreneur. I will say this though as well in terms of taxes. Why are we constantly paying taxes if the government can constantly print its own money? What's the point? Yeah. What's the point of the government printing money and yet they're still collecting taxes from us? If we can just print our own money, we'll just print the money. <laughs> but then it loses value. <laughs> we're losing value already. Yeah. We're losing value and we're losing a whole lot more value because uh, last Thursday, Saudi Arabia just did not renew. It's our petrodollar agreement with America to trade oil in, from Saudi Arabia in the currency of the American dollar. So that's maybe we reserve that conversation for next week in terms of further potential inflation that's coming our way. What about for the people who are the taxi Nazis, I want to call them, um, who are like the anti-entrepreneurs and the anti-systems, right? Where right now when you made that comment of, I went out to uh, breakfast with my mom, my family, and the moment that my mom asked me about business, it now automatically became a business conversation and a business meal, so now it's a write-off for myself. Mm -hmm. What about for the people who tell you like, yo, you're, you're screwing with the system, you're taking advantage of what you have, you know, that's not right, that's not... If, They're if, just not educated about the tax system. Yeah. They're, they're lacking financial literacy. Listen, if you're not financially literate and you hear somebody talk some financial jibber jabber and you don't understand it, you say they're full of crap because you just don't understand the language. G guess what happens when we hang around rich people? You've been hanging around me, we hang around rich people. Guess what rich people talk about? Rich people things. Yeah. Guess what happens when you hang around uh, uh, broke people? Guess what broke people talk? Broke people things. So if you, if you don't understand the language, this financial talk, this conversation about taxes and investments and insurance and wealth creation, this is jibber jabber. If, you want, if you're watching this podcast and you're the first person in your family to potentially become a first generation cash flow millionaire and nobody in your family is a millionaire, well, guess what? You're officially the black sheep. You're the person set, setting yourself apart to be the first person in your, in your family to plant a financial flag because it only takes one person in a family's bloodline to change that last name forever. And it could be you. 
if you stick with your commitments. Yeah.